It always makes me so happy that I'm doing this, that I'm making these programs, these DVDs from my film prints. Now, not every, I don't show the normal films that other people would show that are on TCM, that are on PBS, that you could see anywhere, that you could go to a DVD store, if they have them anymore, and you could buy them or buy them online. Ah, ah. I try to make this show special because I show you the things you can't see anywhere else and be them as they say old movies because they're so rare and unavailable they are in reality new movies to all of you because none of you have seen them heard of them and you might even know they were ever, were ever filmed in the first place but that's my game plan. My game plan is for us to really celebrate the creativity and the art of these films. Now, for those who are new here, such as my gorgeous blonde friend over there, uh, I'd like to let you know what it's all about. I try to recreate the neighborhood movie house feeling, you know? And by doing that, what I do is I laboriously Search out in my huge, oh, I tell you, if you come down to my basement in my house, it's not that you're never going to want to leave, you're never going to be able to leave. So, so, but I have so much variety, so much titles of different shorts, films, features, different genres, that I, oh, when I do choose a feature, from my film, actual film collection on reels to show you. I find similarly themed shorts also in my collection that are similarly themed to the plot of that feature I'm showing. So it's sort of like a build up and a lead in into the feature film presentation. And it's like the neighborhood movie house atmosphere because you're seeing a sh comedy short, you're seeing a cartoon, all of the same era joined with the feature. Now you're asking, what the heck is Carpenter, aka the movie man, showing you today? Well, we're going to begin with, all similarly themed, we're going to begin with a Our Gang short an early Our Gang short. Now you all say, Bill, Bill Cosby hit all these because he feels that they're racist. Well, they're not racist, and I'm going to show you right now they're not. And these films that Bill Cosby has sort of banned, so to speak, I have. So we're going to begin with Fish Hooky, which has an amusement park theme, followed by King of the Mardi Gras with your favorite spinach eating sailor, Popeye the Sailor Man. Who wants to sing the song? I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. There you go, there. <laughs> so, we're going to go to that also with a. Uh, amusement park theme. Then, we're going to the feature. Now, why is this film so important? James Cagney's premiere. Let, let me do the talking. I'm the movie man. I'm, I'm the one with the paycheck for this. <laughs> you just have my undying love. Anyhow, uh, the reason why I'm showing this now, you're going to see James Cagney the youngest you've ever seen him. Why? Why? Because this is his very first film. Now, James Cagney and Joan Blondell, they, they were doing this stage version on Broadway. The film, the acting of Cagney, as you'll see in this film adaptation of the stage show, this was so phenomenal that Warner Brothers hired him to go from New York to California and make the screen version of this film. Now, why is this film also important? It also is the, another person who was in that Broadway stage version was Joan Blondell. This is her very first film. In fact, 
Cagney and Blondell made a lot of films. So they've been working prior to 1930. This film is 1930 where they co-star with each other. But prior to that, there was the Sage Show they were co-starring. And this went on at Warner Brothers as a very good New york -y kind of a couple. And you could see that in their screen adaptations of their characterizations. Um, the thing about the film that I want to show you, one of the things I do that I can proudly say no other film historian does. Who Especially does at East Meadow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, they don't do anything in East Meadow. I don't know what the heck they do. But then again, I don't get it. So um, the thing is that, uh, and neither should you. So the, what I'm saying is that this film is important and why is it important? Because it really is going to be showing you what was going on. And that's why I do, I teach the history of what was going on in our world at the time that really provocated and really inspired these films to be made and to be understood by the audiences of that time. Because the audiences of that time, they weren't shocked at these things that you now could say are politically incorrect or pre-code before the decency code was passed, which this film is. But they knew the same things were going on outside the doors of the theater. This was reality back then. And I'm trying to teach all of you what was going on back then in America by the greatest time machine of all, these films. Now what you're gonna see, this film is all about prohibition and violating it. So they are bootleggers. The film is about bootlegging, it's about crime, but Cagney, if you'll notice, now if you know the film, White Heat. Wait, oh. Oh. Okay. I'm on top of the world! Okay. <laughs> if you know that film, you're going to see Cagney, who was a mad, crazed killer in that film, he had a very strong mama complex. He was a real mama's boy for a heartless killer. And you're going to see that in this film, Sinner's Holiday Today, he also has that same mama's boy complex and can't handle the fact that he took a life, and he runs to Mars. So anyhow, the next film after the little Our Gang short, I'm gonna be showing Popeye, then we're gonna see the feature, but I want you to pay special attention to the bootlegger in this film. His name was Warren Heimer. I see none of you know who the yes, heck I do. You, you do! Yes. This woman was Warren Heimer's wife. No. Stand up! No, I'm not so sure. So can you tell her? Turn the camera to her. No, he's a, just a character actor, but I know him. But he was, a he was a tough guy character actor. Yes. Who normally played it for left. Can you tell us something about him? No. Is that because you don't want to or you don't know? I don't know. Ah, there we go. Back on me. <laughs> A round of applause for Mary. Mary. Mary, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being brave enough to have me hurl comments at you. Thank you. Just don't be a Weisenheimer. Oh, no! <laughs> Warren Heimer, Weisen. At least I know he's there to get me with a good little retort. That's <laughs> why I come here. Anyway, so he keeps me on my toes. So, anyhow, uh, I hope you enjoy the film. I hope you enjoy the whole entire presentation. What about the following months? I, the following month. Well, as you all know, because I have personally handed you out the flyers <laughs> next month. What date is it, Ira? Ira Lippa, ladies and gentlemen. Turn that camera, Joe. Let's have some fluidity. February 15th, the day after uh, Valentine's Day. That's right. So this way you could bring all those half-eaten boxes of chocolate and give them to me. No, you break my heart. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Always with the ball. You're very funny today, Lee. Being retired is good for you. Yeah, it sure is. Anyhow, so we're going to be seeing... Now, I've never shown a Shirley Temple film in my... Oh! I, Greg, Greg Topkis was supposed to do this. But he forgot because he's such a humble guy, and he actually believes that I'm humble, which you're all finding I'm not. <laughs> so, this is my 17th. Let's get close. 17th year of doing movie man matinees. <laughs>
Oh, and, and Greg has brought, in honor of my 17 years anniversary uh, doing these programs and lectures, Greg has brought his photo album of some risque pictures of his oh, no. friend Ira. Just you take your shower. Anyhow, so, um, anyhow, so they're pictures of the years of him coming to all of the shows and pictures with he and I, uh, flyers from all of the tons of shows I've yep. done from my film collection. I thank you so much, Greg. Thanks a lot. So, so why is this going to be the first? So why is this going to be the first Shirley Temple in oh. all these years? Yeah, why? Well, because I never found a print that I could transfer oh, okay. to DVD that I felt was entertaining <laughs> enough. Mm -hmm. Now. This film, this the poor little rich girl, I think really is her best film and most entertaining because she is the most charming ever. And she, of course, is very talented. Yes, that's true. But the thing is that she, she warms the cockles of the hearts. Let's take that in a clean way, please. But uh, of the oldest, crankiest man, the ca greatest character actor you could find for that kind of part. But the film also has in it Alice Faye and Jack Haley before he was uh, the Tin Woodsman. So that's the deal. And all, I don't know if any of you remember Henry Armetta, Mary? Yes, I do. Get that camera on Mary. A little Italian guy. There you go. Look at the camera, Mary. Oh, there you go. Let's not forget the other person that was in that movie. Mrs. Titanic. Oh, you want to say it? Come up, come up. And all, come also, up, come up. Also, st stars Gloria Stewart, whose last movie was Titanic. Yes. James that was Cameron. Not sure. That's right. Gloria Stewart. One of the one of the later ones. She did make some other movies. Name some. Look at the camera. Uh, I gotta uh, teach these guys how to be a hammy stars no, like me. I'm, 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 I'm Jewish. I don't like to be unkosher. Oh, <laughs> he's Jewish. He doesn't want to be a ham. That's no, but, the first no, but, one no, I've no, ever no, met who no, didn't want to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Gloria Stewart thing. also was the love interest in James Wells' Invisible Man. The Invisible Man. Oh, the ones I, I don't want to Oh, I was. You know, there, there were a few others in the 90s. Iris' mind is so, so filled okay. with so many films. Okay, and I was planning on taking over the world next week, also. No. You can put the camera back on me <laughs> because I kind of feel comfortable with the camera on me. But look, forget about the camera. We're going to see films, right? And what's your watch? What about watch? Oh, well. I'm trying, it has to be okay yet, but I'm trying to show a very New York film for St. Patrick's Day. It's silent with a synchronized music and sound effects track, Riley the Cop. And the film is really, really great because it really shows the, 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 Irish, the Irish heart, the Irish heart for people, for beer and for fun. So I let's enjoy this film and thank you so much for coming. Great God bless you. Thank you. His next film will be at the Louis when he gives anybody else. Oh, okay. Trust him. Well, how are you doing? Thank you. How about real? Is it good? Roll him! I'm trying to make it Hollywood-esque, all right? Depression. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 